I think it is now official that President Uhuru Kenyatta has officially broken all ties with Azimio. I remember a little while back Azimio held a Thanksgiving party at Safari Park Hotel and President Uhuru Kenyatta was sent a personal invitation letter by opposition leader Raila Odinga. And during that time, Uhuru had not yet started his peacekeeping works and he was very much in Nairobi. But he somehow still snubbed the event. But yet today, former President Uhuru Kenyatta met with the current sitting president, President Ruto, and the two seemed to be on very good speaking terms. Coincidentally, Azimio leaders will be holding a parliamentary group meeting tomorrow. I, I'm not too sure, perhaps it could be that they have sensed deceit from President Uhuru, or they are just trying to protect their assets in the commission, the likes of Cherera. We'll know more about that tomorrow. Now in this particular video, I want us to analyze President Ruto's meeting with Uhuru for the first time after the inauguration at Kasarani Stadium. But before we proceed, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. So today, November the 28th, is the first time that former President Uhuru Kenyatta has seen President William Ruto in his full powers as president. He got to see Ruto arrive in a huge motorcade, flanked by his new aide-de-camp, and accompanied by some of his cabinet secretaries, the likes of Aden Duale and the cabinet secretary of foreign affairs, Alfred Mutua. That is not something that President Uhuru Kenyatta is used to seeing. But in all fairness, the familiarity is also not embedded in President Ruto. Even he is not used to being in charge around President Uhuru Kenyatta. As they engaged, I noticed that President Ruto naturally gave more respect to Uhuru Kenyatta. When they were walking, President Ruto took up the position that he normally would take when he was the deputy president. And that is the far right. And Uhuru Kenyatta walked in the middle like he always did when he was the sitting president. The image on your screen right now should be able to confirm the same to you. Now also, I noticed that when the two met, Ruto referred to Uhuru Kenyatta as Mr. President. Just have a look at this video. is delegating various groups, parties, of, as we launch the third round of the declarations of the EAC, but also for the financial commitment. From the last week to the rest. We need to listen to when you come out of home. We need to say more about what the father will come back. So it is quite evident that Ruto still respects his former boss Uhuru Kenyatta and that is a good thing to see because former heads of state are usually accorded due respect well into their retirement and President Ruto quite frankly will not be the one to break precedent. Now, under what circumstances did the two gentlemen meet and what does this mean moving forward? So the two gentlemen met at Safari Park Hotel in Nairobi for the official opening of the third inter-Congolese consultations of the Nairobi peace process. So what does this meeting and the subsequent cordial relationship between the two presidents mean moving forward? The first is that Azimio can kiss Mount Kenya votes goodbye. The mammoth 1.2 million votes that they got from the region was as a result of President Uhuru Kenyatta's intervention. And now that the region is seeing one of their kingpins working with Kenya Kwanzaa, it is safe to say that the room for doubt has officially been demolished. This meeting of the two, to me, also symbolizes the inevitable exit of Jubilee Party from Azimio. I am sure Jeremiah Kioni was watching proceedings and thinking to himself, surely it is about time that we left. And by the way, before I even forget, Deputy President Shigadi Gashagwa did not attend the meeting. And I believe that was engineered on purpose because the way he embarrassed President Uhuru Kenyatta during inauguration, there is no way Uhuru Kenyatta would have felt comfortable at the event with Rigadi Gashagwa present. 
I am yet to be convinced that President Uhuru has forgiven Rigathi Gashagwa and also that Rigathi Gashagwa has forgiven President Uhuru. They have both fired lethal rounds at each other over the past one year. Uhuru made sure that 200 million went missing from Rigathi's accounts and also saw to it that he was harassed and detained by police officers. In turn, Rigathi exposed the Kenyatta family over the issue of state capture during the televised debate and he also embarrassed him during the inauguration. So it'll be really interesting to see if the two can set aside their differences. Though for me, I believe Ruto told Rigathi not to attend because Rigathi has a terrible relationship with President Uhuru. And also, Rigathi is trying to become the new Mount Kenya kingpin when we all know that the immediate former Mount Kenya kingpin is President Uhuru Kenyatta, and he is not happy about it. Most kingpins like to be consulted about succession politics in the region. So they come out and say publicly that Nimechia Flani na Flani aendele na nchi. But for Rigathi Gashago, he is using a different approach. He is not going to Uru Kenyatta to seek any favors, to seek any permission. He is simply going to the mountain and doing what he needs to do. And he has given the Mount Kenya leaders a December 31st deadline. So there is a lot of friction between the two. I don't know how they will ever come to resolve it. But for President Uhuru Kenyatta and President William Ruto, those guys... Whatever they had going on, it's done. I think the relationship is restored. They are happy with each other. It, yes, it is a bit awkward, but they are having a workable relationship, which is very important. It's not, it's not a must that you shoot golf together or drink together or have the same ideologies. But the fact that you have a working relationship, the fact that you can be in the room and tolerate the other person, that is enough in politics. Quite frankly, it's more than enough. But for Rigadi and Uhuru... I think that will take quite some time. However, that is just my opinion, guys. Please drop me your comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button, and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios.